Okay, so we are live on Facebook right now and YouTube. I am Charles Siagro, one of the hosts of CBC's Marketplace. I'm joined today by Lauren Nurse, who may look familiar to some of you because you may have seen her uh, throughout the week on our CBC News rollout, but also in our program last night. Um, in case you missed our investigation, we're taking a look at farmers markets and what we wanted to do is take a look at the issue of transparency. So here we are in a beautiful sunny uh, Saturday morning like so many people uh, out enjoying a farmers market. Um, and what we wanted to do this week was just take a look at the issue of reselling. So the idea of people at farmers markets, vendors selling stuff they didn't grow. And when you ask them about where their stuff came from, are you getting an honest answer? So we're joined by Lauren Nurse. Um, Lauren is a farmer. It's Small Spade is the name of your yep. farm. Mm -hmm. So Lauren, first of all, tell me a little bit about your setup here. We're at the Junction Farmers Market. This is a verified market. So explain a little bit to people about what that means and why you're here. So the Junction Farmers Market is great because it's one of the markets that actually makes sure that the vendors that are here aren't reselling, they're growing all of their own produce. Right. Um, and when you apply to the Farmers Market, uh, you have a strict questionnaire that you have to fill out. So there's a series of questions that kind of determine whether or not you're growing your own produce. Um, and they also do a really nice job of curating the selection of vendors so that everyone offers uh, the public a different thing. So some right. people have eggs, some people have vegetables mushrooms, cheese, so it's a really nice market because it's small, it's community based, um, they have a food voucher program for people who are food insecure, so oh, it's wow. really nice because it gives back to the community and it's also very, very strict about uh, prohibiting reselling. Okay. Yeah. So if you caught the show last night or maybe you are one of the thousands of people who at this point has seen our <laughs> online story, um, you'll notice that in our investigation we visited markets all across Ontario. And we found that at eight of the 11 markets we visited, there was reselling. And then at half of those places, when we were asking the questions about the food, we weren't getting honest answers. So um, people who were selling produce, passing it off as their own, some of it having come from, as it turns out, the Ontario Food Terminal. Um, so we are taking questions, Lauren, now mm -hmm. from people about the show, uh, for you. And I've got one already, so clearly we've struck a chord <laughs> with people. Um, but Andrew English is asking, Asking, how do you find verified markets? Great question, because I think after seeing the program, people are going to want to know where can I go to get verified food. So um, one of the things that uh, Farmers Market Ontario has done is instituted something called the MyPick program, yep. and so um, some of the vendors here are MyPick certified. We're in the process of getting MyPick certified. And that's just um, basically an outside certifying body that ensures uh, that the farmer is inspected and that everything that the farmer grows is what they're bringing to market. And so there's no way to kind of cheat the system. Sure. So the way to make sure that you're getting actual produce from an actual farmer is to look for the MyPick logo. But also um, some of the bigger markets um, might have a harder time keeping track of their vendors. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would say the best and easiest way to make sure that you're probably getting homegrown produce from actual farmers is to stick with the smaller markets um, and to also make sure that you speak to the farmer personally and okay. ask questions. We've talked about that in the piece, right? but it's just the best and easiest way to make sure that um, you know you have a personal relationship with the farmer because that is what farmers markets are for. Um, Andrew, one thing I'll also add, the MyPick program is voluntary, it's an opt-in mm -hmm. program, yeah. so not every farmer has to be in MyPick, but you will see their signage if they are a MyPick farmer. So that's another thing you can look for. Um, we've got another question from YouTube. So um, clearly some Toronto listeners are uh, <laughs> tuned in right now. Um, somebody wants to know on YouTube, is all the produce at this market organic? Uh, not everyone is certified organic. Uh, we're certified organic. Um, I'm actually not sure how many vendors are certified organic. I've seen here. a handful of them here that are organic and they're yeah. pretty good about having signage usually but um, again I think it just goes back to having those questions with yeah. the farmer asking and for the transparency. For sure and the other thing to say about certified organic is um, it is quite expensive to go through the certification right. process um, and it's also a, a lot of paperwork uh, and so some farmers just don't have the resources available to, to them to actually go sure. through that process and so you can always talk to the farmer and ask them what their growing practices are, if they spray. Right. They might not be certified organic, but that doesn't mean that they don't follow growing practices that are organic. Okay. So there's a little bit of wiggle room there. See, this is why you need an actual farmer, because <laughs> they, they know these things. It's all about communication and, 
you know, I'm just going to keep emphasizing again and again, just have conversations with the people who are right. growing your food. It's the best and easiest way to make sure that you know exactly what you're getting. Um, so Adrian Ramirez is asking, are there any enhancements done to food to make it appear healthy and good? Um, I don't know of any if there are. The only I could, thing I could think of <laughs> is maybe if they're like polishing or like rubbing apples to make them look shinier or something. I, I don't know. I feel that, um, well, I mean, I feel like the produce that you get at the grocery store has gone through processes like waxing, right? Um, you know, cellophane sealing, so things are in kind of like sealed packages, and those things do tend to make food look cleaner and more polished. Yeah, but small growers don't usually have the resources to right. um, to do those kinds of things. I mean, um, Adrian, I think you can. Here's here's a here's a here's a bunch of Lauren's lettuce. And um, I can still see a little, a little dirt, <laughs> a little bit of dirt here. on here. So I guess this yeah. is a good, this is a good sign that it came out of the ground not too long ago. Yeah, there's some fresh. soil clinging to these guys, and so um, yeah, enhancements not so much at the farmers market. Okay, um, this is an interesting question because okay. I was wondering about this too. Um, I don't think people really have a sense of um, how lucrative farmers markets can be for for people <laughs> like uh, mm -hmm. you and others. Mm -hmm. So Adam W wants to know how much money does a farmer make from one day? Well, I think it can range from the lower end, which is usually about two to three hundred dollars on a slow day, up until maybe about a thousand dollars, I'd say, was the top end. Right. But you also have to understand that just because we're only at the market for four hours doesn't mean we haven't spent two whole days harvesting. Yesterday, for example, in the rain all day long. Um, so there's, you know, hours of work that go into preparing for the farmer's market, getting up at four in the morning, driving here, setting up the tent, um, manning the tent, right. and then packing everything up and then going home. And for a lot of farmers, they live in rural areas that are located about, you know, sometimes two and a half hours away from the market, and so right. there's also travel time. So, you know... Um, it can vary. It can vary, and it can vary. Your profitability depends on um, how close the market is to you and how established your customer base is. So right. there's some variables there that kind of dictate how well you do. Sure. One of the things, um, so if you're just joining us, we're live on Facebook. Charles Siegro from CBC Marketplace. I'm joined by Lauren Nurse. We're at the beautiful uh, Junction Farmers Market right on Dundas. If you live in the neighborhood, come on by, if you, especially if you've got questions for us. Um, but we're talking about transparency in farmers markets. Um, this is in follow-up to our investigation in our program that aired last night. Um, Lauren, you were telling me too about, I had, this is another thing that blew my mind, waiting lists for mm -hmm. farmers to get into farmers markets. Yeah, so yeah. why do um, farmers, vendors want to be at these places so badly? I think it depends on the farmer's mandate and their intention. Uh, the reasons that we want to be at the farmer's market is because we want to feed our community. Uh, we're interested in community development. We're interested in meeting the people who eat our food. And we're interested in having conversations about the food that we grow. But um, it's clearly lucrative, right? I mean, if there's a waiting list, that sends a signal to me that... For sure. So, I mean, it's lucrative in the sense of you can actually um, sell your produce right. and not get uh, squeezed by the prices that grocery stores would charge you right. because if you cut out the middleman and you direct market to the public there's lots of benefits associated with that. Um, the problem though is that small farmers don't actually have access to any other way to market their produce so if you're a larger grower you can supply a grocery store, you can supply a restaurant, you have the volume to do that but if you're a small-scale farmer Basically, the only way that you can actually move your produce is by running a CSA, which we do, yeah. and by being in a farmer's market. And for people who don't know, because it was a new term for me, a CSA right. is? Community Supported Agriculture. Right. So people sign up uh, for a prescribed amount of time, and they get a weekly delivery of food from the farm. And it's like the, the food is pre-sold to that yeah. customer, um, and it's a way to establish a relationship with the farm. Is that a good alternative for people who maybe don't have a, a farmer's market in the yeah. area who want to support yeah. local farmers? Yeah, it's a really good way, um, and it's a really nice thing because people can kind of select a CSA that meets their needs. Our CSA is designed on um, just providing people with the staples, so we grow mostly salad greens, and we sure. provide people with eggs from our farm, oh, sold neat. through okay. FarmGate. Um, some CSAs focus on um, a selection of root vegetables, some okay. CSAs focus on, um, there's even kind of like cheese CSAs oh, and no way. mushroom CSAs and wow. so there's lots of different models you can find but it's okay. a very good option for people who don't have a market next to them. Um, Linda Lee is asking, <laughs> this is, 
I think Linda may have watched the show last <laughs> night. Um, Linda Lee is asking, do small gardeners have stickers on fruit and veg? No, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> so this, Linda, no, they don't. <laughs> okay, so there you go, Linda. So this yeah. is, um, I my sense, Linda, is that maybe you saw the yeah. program. One of the things that we kept seeing in, in a number of markets were those little PLU stickers. Um, there yeah. aren't any here because this is a certified market. Yeah. Um, but those little stickers that you see on your, you know, they're on like your bananas, your apples, mm -hmm. your peaches, mm -hmm. plums, pears. So um, you just heard from the source, no. Um, but I think what's important for people to realize is there is an Ontario food section in the Ontario food yeah. terminal. So there are Ontario farmers who are sending mm -hmm. Ontario grown produce to the fur terminal. How's it going? And some of that is very clearly finding its way into markets. There are a lot of people I think who shop at markets that are okay with buying Ontario grown. Yep. So it's not to say that if you see a sticker that it may not be from Ontario. The law in Canada is if it's coming from outside Canada, you've got to clearly label it's you know from Mexico, the US or wherever. Mm -hmm. But that might be something to keep in mind, Linda. If you're okay buying Ontario produce, uh, there may be some of those stickers on there and that doesn't necessarily mean that it didn't come from Ontario. Yep. Um, oh, B is joining us too. Um, oh, another question from YouTube. How many certified markets are there across Canada? It's a great question. Do you, um, I don't know. Chelsea, do you know? <laughs> um, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. No, I don't either. Um, but what I will say is most markets, and we came across this in our research, um, you can go online to find, for example, in Ontario, the MyPick certified farmers. Um, if, for example, you were to Google the Junction market, when you when you go on their site and you read, they make it clear that mm -hmm. they're a verified market. So probably best practice there would be to look online, see what you can find out uh, on your own, and then pick up the phone yeah, or go to the market and talk to the people like Lauren, right? Because you'll be able to give them... For sure, and you could also contact the market manager. So right. most of the markets have a board of directors and they have a market manager that's... Um, their job is to talk to the public uh, and discuss kind of, um, you know, the selection process for the farmers and who's at the market and right. how they run it. So that's usually a really good person to ask information from. Good place to start yeah. too, yeah. They have all the, all the info you need. Um, so we are live on Facebook right now. Charles Siago from CBC's Marketplace. Laura Nurse from Small Spade Farms. We're at the gorgeous Junction Market. The sun has come out, so I feel yeah. uber <laughs> Canadian because across the table is gorgeous bottles full of like amber maple syrup and the bacon is cooking. It's wonderful. Kevin, want, Kevin Hansi is asking, can Lauren tell us the percentage wise how much her organic products cost above average non-organic or organic supermarket retailers? I would say that um, my products are actually on par with supermarket prices. Uh, sometimes okay. they're even less expensive. I think the perception is that farmers markets are usually more expensive. Yeah. Um, but if you look at the amount of food that you get, for example, in one of those clamshells of organic salad mix, right? it's much less than you would get in volume at the farmer's market and the price oh. is the same or sometimes even cheaper. And so so that's important for yeah. people, like look at how much you're getting. Look at how right? much you're getting for the price because a lot of the time, um, the price that's marked is deceptive and people don't, you know, those clamshells are bulky and they're kind of deceptive because it looks like you're getting more than right. you're, you're actually getting. And the other thing to say about that too is that my produce was harvested yesterday morning or afternoon the stuff in the clamshells at the grocery store might be organic, but it was probably harvested a lot, right. <laughs> a lot longer ago than mine was. So, and Kevin, I hope you know what she means when she's saying clamshells. You mean yeah. like those the, the plastic, plastic? Yeah, it's yeah. like a box that's open, plastic. Closes, closes, and open and closes. Um, okay, Adrian D'Agostino um, is saying that farmers should have their address clearly visible so we can research their farm. It's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about this though, because one of your tips in the show yeah. is if you really want to know where your stuff came from, yep. maybe you should actually go and see it. So 
Is your address posted? We have uh, cards out, so okay. we show customers our business card, and our business card clearly has our address marked upon it. Um, our website, one of the first things on the splash page is our location. Yeah. Uh, lots of pictures of our farm, so you can see where the food was grown and, and what we grow. Um, Could you see, I guess maybe too, I mean, to be fair, privacy, right? Yeah. You don't, I'm sure there are farmers who are happy to have you, but might not want you showing up at all hours of the day. Yeah, <laughs> most farmers prefer you make an appointment before okay. you show up, but... Um, some farms also have market stands and so they really encourage people to come by right. and they um, really like foot traffic and so that's also an option for people too is to investigate with the farmer and see if they have um, you know a roadside farm stand that works on honor system and then they can okay. just go and have a peek but I guess general rule of thumb talk to the farmer if you're curious yeah. about where they are because both you and Sam were saying yeah um, and I think Astrid too like um, you know, for lack of a better term, like real real farmers, people who are really selling what they grow, want you to come and see. They're happy to show you their growing practices. They're happy to be transparent. Uh, you know, we're in farming because we love it. It's a difficult line of work, right. but it's really rewarding. And the best part about being a farmer is actually talking to the people that you're feeding and showing them what you do to produce the food that you grow, because there's a lot of love and care that goes into it. So most farmers are happy to talk about it, and they okay. want you to come visit. Um, Gordon Foster asks, what veg is now in season at the farmer's market? I see so much and it's obviously yeah. not all in season. Gordon, great question. Very good question. Yeah. I am also, I mean, I think I know enough like most, like we're not getting strawberries right now. No, we're not. But let's just give Gordon some help. What should he be looking for? What's in season right now? So we're at an interesting time in the season because the days are getting a bit colder and they're getting shorter. So we're still having things um, that are warm season crops like peppers and tomatoes, okra, ground cherries, all those things. But those things are coming to an end. And probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll get a hard frost. Unless people are growing in protected greenhouse culture, there's not going to be things like peeled tomatoes anymore. Okay. The things that are in season now are brassicas, so lots of radish, lots of turnip, rutabaga, cabbage. Um, Those like Thanksgiving veggies. Yeah, like that the, we all love. The, the really yeah. hearty vegetables yeah. that kind of signal the beginning of fall. Potatoes. Um, oh, you know, hard. That's a good yeah. tip. Hard vegetables. I never thought about it that yeah, way. Yeah, squash. But. Um, pumpkins, uh, butternut squash, there's okay. all kinds of things that are coming into season now, but we are in a bit of a liminal space where the, the hot months are ending and now we're coming into the fall. Yeah. But salad greens too, always salad greens, spinach. Hmm. Um, I wouldn't have thought spinach yeah. now, but okay. It depends too, some people grow in greenhouses and some people grow in the fields, right. so also talk to people. If you see something that's maybe a little bit out of season, you can also investigate and say, hey, do yeah. you have a greenhouse? I think like the obvious ones are obvious right like I think most of us know we're not yeah. growing bananas and pineapples in Ontario yeah. but it yeah. can be hard for people right because I don't for sure I mean it's I difficult. have I have a small garden but I'm by no means the expert um, okay this is interesting I have recently this is I feel like a new phenomenon in food labeling um, but also food. So Joy uh, Sorora Bay Beatty I hope I'm pronouncing that right Joy um, do you use GMO seeds? I'm looking no. for GMO free products. All of the food that we grow, all of the vegetables that we have on our farm are heirloom or heritage varieties. And so we actually get a lot of our seed uh, straight from a seed producer in Italy that's been in business wow. for 300 years. So for people but, who don't know, yeah. GMO means? Genetically modified organism. So it just means that um, your vegetables have been hybridized in a way that um, indicates they're not necessarily the way nature made them. So okay. there's been some human intervention in the breeding of your vegetable. Okay, so like a, you know, breeding peppers to make them bigger or different flavor or whatever. I think GMOs happen more in cash cropping though than they do in okay. vegetable production. Okay. So it is something to worry about, Joy, but I don't think that um, small farmers, uh, that wouldn't be a thing that would normally happen, but it does happen in things like soy crops and corn and sort of okay. the bigger scale uh, growers. Okay. Um, Lynn Lucio is asking, what are some warning signs to look out for when shopping at a farmer's market as far as farm grown and reseller? Great question, Lynn. <laughs> yeah. So just to recap, we are here at the Junction Farmer's Market. We're live on Facebook and YouTube. I am Charles C. from Marketplace, Lauren from Small Spade Farm. So Lynn is asking, what are some warning signs to look out for when shopping in a farmer's market as far as farm grown and reseller? So, Lynn. 
the thing that I would say, uh, first and foremost, is to look for vegetables that are out of season. And a lot of the farmers markets are actually publishing things on their website that actually discuss what's in season oh, when. So, so there's like a chart. You go. Yeah. Just, you know, a quick Google search will tell you what's in season where. I mean, different regions ge geographically will have different um, things that are in season, but it's very easy to find that information. So just be at the farmer's market armed with that info and you're going to be good. Um, the other thing to say is look for uh, extreme uniformity. Right. Our vegetables are yeah. not necessarily uh, all the same size because they're grown in a field and the conditions that they're grown in are not controlled. So. Like these are your garlics. Yeah. This is, I just grabbed two. So if you're still watching and see, I mean, they're different sizes. Totally different sizes. You know, they're from the same bed in the same field, but this one did a lot better than this one. And so we're selling this one for a little more expensive and this one for a little less, but. It smells great though. Yeah, it does. It's Red Russian. It's a beautiful variety. Um, these are our, our young Hackerite turnip. And so the same thing, like there is some variation in the size. Um, if things look too perfect, if there's a waxy coating on them, if they've been kind of, um, somebody was asking before about ways to polish food and make right. it look more enhanced. Right. If there's some kind of film or covering on the food, that's another thing. A, a dead giveaway is to look kind of at the vendor's table. If they're using, um, you know, recycled bins, we yeah, use a like lot of Lauren these sort of... All her, you can, it's kind of hard to see, but Lauren's yeah. got all her stuff in... Um, just Rubbermaid bins, bins. just recycle yeah. bins that we sterilize every week and then harvest into. So we don't have boxes that have wholesale labeling on them. Right. If you're seeing kind of uh, cellophane packaging, if you're seeing discarded wrappings, most farmers just harvest right into uh, a crate or a bin and then they bring that to market and unpack at the market. So the other thing that we noticed um, was uh, um, when we were looking under tables, yeah. like cardboard boxes yeah. like all stacked up with different farm names on them yeah. so it was it was a pretty clear giveaway that yeah. stuff was coming from elsewhere mm -hmm. um, so so that was Lynn um, yep. uh, Sani Sani Preet do you know any organic farms in the GTA Brampton area in particular that are mm. open all year long huh I don't it's hard to find the ones that are open all year long so if you're open all year long, it means that you have the ability to uh, grow in a greenhouse. So a lot of the time, we have two greenhouses, so we do run our CSA all year round. We have the ability to do that. It depends on uh, what infrastructure the farmer has on their farm. Um, I'm not actually sure that I know I of any of Brampton of or the GTA yeah. area that are open year round, but um, there are some farmers markets that are open year round. So the right. Peterborough Farmers Market, right. ironically, is one of the ones that's open all year round. Uh, the Junction Market here, uh, the last day is November fourth, so it does that's go still quite late. late. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if you're looking for produce uh, that is certified organic that you can access all year round, um, the best thing to do is just investigate CSAs because a lot of farmers are actually starting yeah. to run winter CSAs. So, Sani, those are those. Um, sorry, CSA is community a supported agriculture. Sorry. Yeah. So those are some of those like delivery services that, where mm -hmm. they will send you the box of what they've got that week or whatever right to your front door. Yeah. So that's a good one, especially. Um, so I live in Mississauga. I can't think of any that I know off the top of my head that yeah. are open all year round. Um, so we have a comment from Jane Black Werner. We are farmers here in Niagara on the lake. Beautiful. Very Check. great growing area. Oh, Jealous. this is this is a good. Check the license plate. If the license plate says farm on their farm vehicle, vehicle, yeah, that means unless That's you're a, a really grower, you can't get a farm license yep. plate. Yep. To a, a caveat, one of our vehicles hmm. is a farm plate and one is not. Okay. But it is a really good indicator if you're suspicious and you check the vehicle, that might be the nail in the coffin. I think, Jane, I think you tweeted me or someone else yeah. tweeted me about this too. That's a really good so tip. So I didn't even know that. Yep. Really? You can yep. register farm yeah. vehicles. Yeah, yeah, your vehicle, it's on your license plate and you're registered as a farm vehicle. So. Wow. And only farmers can actually get those plates. Uh, you have to be a member of a, a farming association like OFA wow. or National Farmers Union to get it. So that's interesting. Good tip. Okay, this is a great question yeah. um, because I think people have noticed some some of the farmers market produce is definitely at a premium premium you'll pay yeah. a little more than grocery yeah. store you will so kathy tedford's asking why would people pay more at a farmers market well there's a lot of really good reasons to pay more at a farmers market uh the first reason is that um 
I will say, in my personal opinion, that we need to encourage young farmers to get into the business, and most of the time a farmer's market is the only way for them to direct market the produce to the public. The median age of farmers right now in Ontario is somewhere between 60 and 70 years old. Wow. So we're going to have a real problem in a couple of years where these people are retiring and young farmers will not be coming in to take their place. Um, our food system is already quite insecure. We truck in most of our food from out of province, sometimes even out of Canada. If there's ever a fossil fuel crisis, which has happened before, mm -hmm. if there's any kind of breakdown of the transportation of food, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. So we need to make sure that we actually have food grown in Ontario for us to eat. And we also want to make sure that we foster sustainable young farmers so that we actually have a secure food system in the future. It's very important. I remember um, that when like the price of a cauliflower was like was like yeah. nine dollars a cauliflower. I also think cauliflower. which is preposterous. And that was at the grocery store. Yeah. I also think that there's a bit of a perception that farmers markets are more expensive. But as we talked about before, um, my price for my mescaline is better than the price at the grocery store for okay. organic certified mescaline. Can so, you just can you talk about like for example like the two pound bag of carrots say that I buy at the grocery store? Mm -hmm store versus like two pounds at the farmer's market. Practically speaking, does it cost you, a smaller farmer, more than yes, the big guy to grow and it, bring them to me? There's an economy of scale thing happening, so that's already going to mean that I can't make as much profit as that farmer can. Right. The other thing to say is that we need to encourage small diversified farms that aren't monocropping, that are farming in a sustainable way that's not, um, you know, affecting our environment, we're actually acting as stewards for the environment. Um, when you have a monocrop, there's no diversity, therefore there's less insect populations, um, there's more chance of disease, you need to spray. Yeah. There's all these factors that happen that are specific and unique to farming and I know that people might not know about that. Um, but when you come to a farmer's market and you pay a little bit more, you're also making sure um, that you're essentially voting with your dollar. Um, right. Because we and need to start a lot when you vote with your dollar. We need to really yeah. start thinking about the environment. And I know that's not on everyone's radar, but it is a problem. And monocropping is very difficult for um, to be done in a sustainable way. It's it's okay. not something that's good for the environment. Um, so, uh, Giha Kali, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Giha. Um, how are prices created? Are they based on other sellers? Um, I think that sometimes people do tend to look to other sellers to see what people are charging, but I'll say that I set my own prices based on what it costs me to produce the crop. Okay. I have one employee, I pay her much more than minimum wage, I pay her a living wage, which is important to me because I need to make sure that um, my employee is remuner remunerated in a way that is fair. Uh, farming is really backbreaking and difficult work and it's hard on your body and if you're not mechanized as we aren't, um, it can be a really, really difficult yeah. job, and so I need to pay my worker a living wage. Um, I set my prices based on how much it costs me to buy the seed, which is certified organic. Also needs to be shipped from somewhere else because we grow um, specialty crops that aren't usually available in Canada. Um, I'm certified organic, which costs me $1,000 a year. Um, Did you guys hear that? $1,000 a year to be certified it's a thousand organic. It's $1,000 to be certified organic. Just for the certification, I have to pay the inspector to come to my farm and inspect me to make wow. sure that I'm not spraying and that I'm doing things sustainably. I have to build greenhouses. I have to have equipment that is uh, scaled to my farm, which can sometimes be more expensive because I'm not using a giant tractor to mm. plow my field. So um, it's complicated. There's costs associated with this and they're high. So if you're sustainable and you're committed to organic agriculture, you're going to spend a lot more to produce your crop than someone who isn't. Okay. Um, so if you're just joining us, thank you. We are live on Facebook and YouTube right now. I'm Charles Siagra, one of the hosts of Marketplace. Lauren Nurse, uh, waving to her fans Sorry, here. Sorry, waving but to my Junction Farmers Market. Um, Lauren <laughs> is... Uh, Prepare to say owner operator farmer at small space all of those things farms. Yep. yep. Um, so if you didn't catch our show last night, uh, look it up on YouTube. I think um, based on the number of comments, clearly I think we've struck a chord. Yeah. Um, we did an investigation into farmers markets. The idea of reselling people bringing things to market, sometimes passing it off as their own when they didn't grow it. We did find a number of examples where farmers, vendors weren't honest about where the food was coming from, and we're taking your questions. So we'll get back to it because there's lots. Julie Ride on YouTube, if I choose to buy from the farmer's market instead of supermarket, what is the difference in the vegetables, A, mm -hmm. and then the impact on human health? 
So let's start with the difference in the vegetables between grocery store versus farmer's market. I would say the big difference in vegetables between the grocery store and the farmer's market is that you're going to be able to find things at the farmer's market you can't find at the grocery store. Yeah, like these things. Um, what are the, What is this so, called? So these are a beautiful, really tender salad turnip called Hakkari turnip. They're delicious and they're incredibly sweet at this time of year. Um, I just eat them raw when I'm harvesting them in the field, just right. one for the basket, one for me. So variety. Variety. Um, we grow things like Jersey Wakefield cabbage, which is pointed. We grow blue potatoes. Uh, we have pastured quail eggs. We have minatina, mesh, uh, specialty arugula. So there's all these things that you just will not be able to find at a grocery store because grocery store food has been grown in a giant field, in a monoculture. Most producers will be growing, you know, a thousand square feet of kale and that's all they grow. A small diversified farm will be growing all kinds of different crops and so you'll have a beautiful selection available to you that you won't be able to find anywhere else. Okay. Um, there was a second part uh, of that The question. second part was the <laughs> impact on human health, which, which might be a little tough for us to You know what? Into, no, but... it's actually really important. Um, and you can stop me if I'm going no, on No, go and for on, it. Chelsea. But um, the one thing that I'll say about this is, especially on our farm, we really concentrate on nutrient density. So we re remineralize our soil. We soil test in the spring and in the fall. And then we add back in the minerals that are missing, like boron, selenium, manganese, zinc. These are all really important things to have present in your soil so that the vegetables can take them up and actually give them to the person that's eating them. So wow. if you're buying grocery store food, um, some sustainable growers might be growing and supplying grocery stores, but I would say, in my personal opinion, the majority of them will just be kind of um, water and cellulose at a certain point. Because if you don't put back what you take right. out through crops, you're just growing inert material that's not uh, nutrient dense, wow. it's not sustenance, and it's not good for your health. How many times do you do that? You said? We, split, we soil test in the spring and in the fall, wow. and depending on the results of every test, we then add back in boron, magnesium, manganese, <laughs> calcium, wow. all of the micronutrients that are important for human health. So. Oh, this is a great question. Alvin Shen. Good one, Alvin. <laughs> How do you see farmers markets in about 20 years from now? Huh, that's really interesting. I'm trying to think what would be different. I would like to see um, I would like to see a series of smaller farmers markets like this one springing up. And um, yeah, when you say smaller, there's maybe I'd say we have ten farm vendors. Yeah. And then we have a rotating stable of other vendors that sell things like honey, mm -hmm. maple syrup. Uh, homemade pasta, pies, and those people come in and out on a rotating basis, but there's right. only about 10 of us farmers that are here every single week. So you, the future you think will be sort of smaller? I would like it, and maybe this isn't a, a, a future prediction, but <laughs> okay. a, a personally invested prediction, but I think it would be really great if we had a series of uh, really community-based uh, smaller farmers markets that um, served a specific community and then gave back to the community. So okay. one of the things that I really like about this market is that they have a food voucher program for food insecure people and they also donate a significant amount of money to the STOP which is a neighborhood uh, organization oh, okay. that provides food for people um, and they, they give back to the community and so farmers markets are supposed to be about community, they're supposed to be about building community, they're supposed to be about relationships between farmers and the community that they serve. So I think it would be really great if we actually fostered that and amplified it a little bit and had that become um, maybe the template for farmers markets in the future instead of corporatized, standardized, kind of almost industrialized yeah. farmers markets that maybe start to serve the same purpose as the industrial food system. How is that, Alvin? I feel Sorry, like it's a little heavily political, I Alvin. You, I, think you got, uh, I think you got quite the answer there. Yeah. Um, so we've been live on Facebook for half an hour and you're still rolling, so we're going to stay with you. Uh, Brian Watts. Hello, Brian out in uh, PEI. Uh, this story is Ontario-based. What are other provinces' farmers' markets like? Good hmm. question, Brian. Um, we did go out to Halifax. I can say I have lived in Victoria, BC. I have lived in Edmonton, Alberta. Mm -hmm. I have lived in Windsor, Ontario. Um, so I've seen quite a few farmers markets yeah. in my day. Um, I think you really get a mix. Um, when I lived in Victoria, for example, there were uh, oh, no, huge numbers of really kind of more similar to you, like smaller, smaller ops. Mm -hmm. um, the farmers market in Edmonton was quite big um, mm -hmm. on 104th Street. It was 
pretty big. Um, I think it still is. That was a few years ago. Um, so I think you're getting a you get a total range. Um, like in Halifax, for example, the one that we were at, you're getting a lot of. Um, people actually like cooking and, and serving prepared food. You're also getting a lot of artisans. Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I think there's a real mix in markets across the country. Um, but I think there are examples of this small springing scale up. springing up yeah. more and more. Um, Lauren J. Paquette, hello from Alberta. How can we ask for better laws? Laura, for you in yeah. Alberta, I can say that um, your markets have an 80-20 rule. So 80% ah. grown, 20% reselling. Um, it totally varies across the country though. So there are like a handful of small exceptions. Like there are some rules for resellers in Quebec, for example, that have to have a retail permit. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, farmers markets are unregulated. So um, how can we ask for better laws? Yeah. I think speaking up, really, you saw the Minister um, of Agriculture in Ontario in our program mm -hmm. um, who's happy to hear complaints, but it is a complaints-based process. That is the case, in my experience now working for Marketplace, a lot of our regulation um, in Ontario um, and beyond is complaints-based. So I think for the most part, Canadian consumers are a bit polite compared yep. to other places. So yep. if you look to, for example, places like the EU, where their their laws seem to be um, almost more proactive okay. as opposed to, to reactive, if that makes sense. So really, I think it just comes down to consumers demanding it. Um, you heard the minister give the number for complaints in the show. If you feel like you want more regulation, yep. I'm sure you wouldn't mind getting that phone call either, uh, Laura. I think the more noise we make about this, the better, because it really needs to be something that uh, most people just have no idea this is happening, and advocacy is really important yeah. on this topic, I think. Um, question from YouTube, how big is your farm? 6.3 acres. 6.3 acres, is that, that sounds it's big very to me, small. <laughs> really, eh? yeah, It's very small. It's very small. Okay. And uh, a lot of that acreage is actually devoted to pasture for our goats. Um, wow. And so we're yes, really... Yes, she has goats. <laughs> I've seen the photos. They're adorable. Uh, we're really only farming about an acre. So uh, part of that land is undercovered uh, greenhouse okay. culture, and then part of it is a market garden. And our market garden is only about 100 by 100 feet. Wow. So we're, we're really intensively growing on a really small, intensively managed space which means we can control nutrient density, uh, we don't need to do any kind of spraying organic, uh, we don't even spray organic formulations because wow. we could just hand manage everything, hand pick insects um, and really cultivate the crops properly. Okay, uh, another question, um, this is coming from Karan Kapoor, is there any academic support? Are there any studies being done on this? Good question. That is a good question. We saw hmm. studies done by um, I know I can't remember the name of the organization, but certainly within Ontario around like keeping stats of how many farmers markets there are, how many farmers there are. You mentioned the statistics around like age of farmers, so mm -hmm. I've seen that kind of thing. Um, but academic studies, I wonder if Karan's asking more around like the sustainability and the food secure stuff. I mean, I think sort of within the grand scheme of things, um, the local and sustainable food culture is, is a pretty new phenomenon, so mm -hmm. I feel like those studies are going to be something that happen in the future. And there's a lot of sustainable ag programs springing up in universities. Um, yeah. There's something happening at Ryerson. Uh, our market manager, Tess, here at the Junction Farmers Market is in, I think, uh, some kind of environmentally based uh, farming program oh, at nice. Ryerson. Trent has a sustainable ag program and one of our employees and one of our interns uh, attended that. So oh, wow. maybe in the future those will be the institutions that will kind of take up the torch and, and run with that. But for now I think we're still in a bit of a, a bit of a strange terrain where it's new enough that that's not happening yet. Good question, Karen. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Yeah. Um, okay, another question from YouTube. Um, oh, this is an interesting question. If we buy food from the farmer's market that aren't actually local, mm -hmm. should we call out the vendors? <sighs> if the vendor is um, lying and if the vendor has said that the food is local and that they grew it, I think that we should. I mean, I should, I should preface everything that I say um, in this interview 
by stating that I don't think that people should stop going to farmers markets. It's really important that people keep coming to the farmers market and they keep supporting small, mm -hmm. local, sustainable farms. It's so important and now more than ever, if we want to get rid of reselling, we need to make sure that the people who are actually growing good, nutrient-dense, uh, sustainable food actually have a place to sell their food. And if we don't go to right. the farmer's market, we won't have a venue for that. So everything is prefaced by a statement, please, please, <laughs> everybody, keep coming to the farmer's market. Um, but I do think if someone lies to you about the food, you should call them out. I do. Um, the other thing, and this has come from YouTube, so I'm not sure who's asking, but the other thing, I mean, we mentioned in our story that you do have the avenue to, to file a complaint with the yep. ministry. Um, Minister Leo was quite clear if you are shopping in Ontario, they do want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was um, surprising. I think people were probably disappointed to hear that in terms of legislation and teeth, mm -hmm. that there's kind of little action they can take because markets aren't regulated. Um, but certainly they want to hear from you, and he did say, Minister Wheel, that they want to work with markets to increase transparency. You also heard from the Peterborough Board in our story about yeah. the desire to increase transparency, that they're on it, but it's going to take time. Um, so it sounds like probably having those conversations is the first step in, in some progress here. Mm -hmm. um, Annette Dennis asks, I buy a lot of President's Choice Organic from Loblaws. How is that different from Farmer's Market Organic? So we were talking a little bit before about monocultures and we were talking about producers that grow just one type of crop, um, usually in a resource intensive uh, greenhouse area that takes up a lot of resources like fossil fuels to heat, um, plastic to cover the crops and the greenhouse themselves. So when you're buying things like President's Choice Organic, um, you're still supporting organic agriculture and that's great. Um, but if you want to take it a step further and be really sustainable um, and really be an advocate for the environment and support people who are stewards of the land, the way to do that is to um, patronize the farmer's market and talk to the people that grow their food on a smaller scale um, using less resource intensive methods. Maybe they, like, they use less plastic in their agriculture. Maybe right. they um, don't use fossil fuels. Maybe they don't use tractors. So there's kinds of... Um, there's a little bit of wiggle room in terms of organic and um, the different shades of organic yeah. that exist. Okay, um, so if you have been joining us today at some point on Facebook, live or on YouTube, we want to say thank you. I am Charles Sierra from CBC's Marketplace, Lauren Nurse of Small Spade Farms. Also want to thank the Junction Market for having us out here today. It's been glorious with the sunshine. It smells fabulous. <laughs> we have wonderful live entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to wrap up. And and I think this is a great question to sort of finish on. Mm -hmm. This is from Alvin Shen. Alvin wants to know if there is one thing you can change, just one thing about farmers markets, what would it be? Uh, I would like farmers markets to be for farmers. It's really simple. I just want farmers markets to be for farmers. That's <laughs> That sounds like a bit of a sound bite, but it's the truth because I think we've moved away from that into a realm that's a little bit shady and we need to get back to the original intention which was to build community by growing good food and supplying the community with that good food and the people that do that are farmers. So for me, this whole journey of this story was a real learning process because for me, um, it was news to me that reselling is even a thing. Yeah. Um, it was certainly surprising and honestly a bit disappointing to see yeah. that there is a, a lack of transparency, sometimes a lack of honesty. So at the very least, we hope we've helped to educate some consumers. Um, shine a light on what is maybe happening at markets um, that are near and dear to your hearts yeah. and ultimately advocate for some change if there are things that consumers aren't happy about we hope we've given you some avenues to pursue to call for that change we certainly appreciate your time lauren My and pleasure. we will be continuing as always to follow the story on marketplace so stay tuned for many more investigations and we thank you for watching enjoy your sunny saturday <laughs>